you are exiles. We are the exiles. We are the fallen. You made the decision to go after Strange Flesh. This is about one thing. This is about us being consumed by another race. Let's get them in a host body system so we can destroy them. You're a kingdom divided. You're good and evil. You are the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. To rectify that situation, you got to be turned up. That's how you know that you know Jesus. Then if it does add up to the scriptures and it's not true. All right, guys, I want to recap quickly for you just some scriptural stuff. This is part two of the previous video. I am going to continue. Um, I did not actually plan on having that much scripture come at you in the first video. Uh, the Lord has a way of doing things. Boy, did he tie it together or what? So here we go. We're going to move into the outward manifestation of the scriptures in real life. Again, just like Jordan Luca, uh, Jordan Luca jeans for $811. That's right out of the Bible. Jordan to descend down Luca, bringer of light. 811 is he wasted his substance on riotous living on riotous living and prostitutes and he has a big splooge on the front of his pants okay i'm just being blunt that's not possible 811 the number in the bible is wasted his substance on riotous licentious sexual promiscuity and he's got a big stain on the front of his pants as if he ejaculated all over his pants end of story it's proven now that they use the bible as uh, Elohim uses a biblical code book, like a little orphan Annie decoder ring. Uh, now I'm going to show you the same thing in the alien movie Romulus, which is Romulus and Remus were twins. I'm going to show you that. Then I'm going to show you the way the Lord has confirmed to me. You are at the moment, like the time is imminently in front of you. When I say at the moment, I know the way the enemy, the, the brood of vipers work. They'll say, you said we're at the moment, Cleck, you're a false prophet. I'm going to say it this way. The Lord has communicated to me uh, seven or eight confirmations of the same, uh, the same venue that the time of our departure is imminent and the time of the female rival taking over the system is imminent. It is at hand. It is in progress. Okay, now you can watch and believe if you want. If you don't, I love you in Christ. God bless you. So let's do it. Here we go. Let me show you the scriptures. For wisdom is a defense and money is a defense, but the excellency of knowledge. Look at the word knowledge. Knowledge. The excellency of knowledge is that wisdom giveth life. Wisdom in a good sense, skillful wisdom. I'm going to show you the root of the word wisdom. It means to be wise in mind, word, or act, to teach wisdom, to make self, show self wise. Okay, but wisdom giveth life to them that have it. And here is wisdom. Consider the work of Elohim. I want to, I'm always going to say the name for God. Right here, the word God is Hebrew word 430 right here. You'll see it, Hebrew 430. Consider the work of God. Well, the word for God right here is Elohim. So everywhere I see the word God, I'm going to say the exact word of God. I'm, I'm going to say exactly what that word is for God. If it's Yahweh, I'll say Yahweh. If it's Elohim, I'll say Elohim. If it says the self-existent eternal Jehovah, I'll say that. Wherever that word is, God, I'm going to tell you what it means in that in that instance the way it is written in the Bible. So I'm going to do it right now. Ready? Here we go. Consider the work of God, Elohim. And I'll click on it right here. Elohim. It means gods. It means of the supreme God. It also means magistrates, angels, or judges. That's what the word Elohim means. It says, for who can make that straight? And the word make that straight means to equalize, to set in order, to make straight. So, consider the work of Elohim, God. Who can make straight, equalize, or fix that which Elohim has 
turned upside down. So I want you to look at the color right here. I highlighted this word. See the word crooked? The word crooked is 5791 right here. I'm going to underline it as well. Who can equalize, make straight, or fix that which Elohim has made crooked? It's 5791 right here. And that word is avath. You should say it out loud. Avath. It means to rest. Please take note of the colors I used when highlighting the vocabulary for this. Okay, the word crooked is 5791, and it means to rest, to bow self, to make crooked, to falsify, to overthrow, to deal perversely, to pervert, subvert, to turn upside down, right there. So the word crooked right here is Hebrew word 5791, and it means to turn upside down, to falsify, overthrow, deal perversely, to bow self. That's what it means. Okay, that is the work of Elohim. It says, consider the work of Elohim. So who can fix that which Elohim has turned upside down? Who can fix that which Elohim has falsified? Who can fix or make straight that which Elohim has dealt perversely or perverted. That's what the scriptures say. Now, I'm going to go to Psalm 146.9. Let's go to the Psalms. Ready? Right here. Psalm 146.9. Okay, ready? Just remember the, the scripture we just did. Elohim turns everything upside down. So, Ecclesiastes, who can fix or who can set straight or make right that which Elohim has turned upside down. And the word is avat in Hebrew. Now ready? Watch. Psalm 146.9. So the Lord, now this is not, the word for God here is the Lord. This is Yehovah, the self-existent, eternal Yehovah. Okay, so the word here for God is the Lord God, the self-existent, eternal Jehovah, preserveth, it means to guard, to save, to make safe. So the Lord makes safe and preserves the strangers. The word strangers means foreigners or sojourners or aliens, which is us. He relieveth the, father, the fatherless. To relieveth, it means to duplicate to restore as a form of reduplication. And I've told you over and over again, when you know you've converted, when your eyes have become single, that's how you know that you've been converted. You know you've been converted when you've been turned right side up because you were inverted. Elohim inverted you. So who can make straight that which Elohim has turned upside down? Now watch this. Ready? And it says right here, the Lord relieveth the fatherless. Okay, watch. The Lord relieveth, restores to duplicate. So he makes you double again instead of good and evil. He restores you as a form of reduplication, a sort of reduplication right here, to stand upright, to relieve. Okay, here you go. The Lord relieveth the fatherless and the widow, but the way of the wicked, the wicked, the morally wrong, the condemned, the guilty, the ungodly, the wicked man, those that have done something wrong or have been condemned or are guilty, but the way of the wicked, he turneth upside down. Let's look at the word upside down. Ready? Same word, 5791, avat. Now, Who can fix or make straight that which Elohim has turned upside down? Well, only the Lord God can through Jesus by turning it back the other way and making your eyes single. So what about the word, what about the wicked? So the Lord loveth the righteous, but the way of the wicked, he turneth upside down. Well, that means Elohim's the wicked. Is there any other way, is there any other way to uh, get around that? The Bible says, who can make straight or equalize or fix out which Elohim has turned upside down? So see, Elohim turns you upside down. By, by How did they do that? Because they made the host body system. That's what turns a spiritual being 
in virtue. You get inverted because you got into a host body. So when you come from above, you get stuck in a host body upside down. And so you're inverted. So here it is. The Lord preserveth the strangers. The word stranger means a guest, which is all of us that are here. By implication, a foreigner, a sojourner, a stranger, the Lord preserveth the strangers. He relieveth the fatherless, but the way of the wicked, he turneth upside down, avoth. Okay, so now back to Ecclesiastes. Now consider the work of Elohim right here. Consider the work of God, Elohim. There it is. What is the work of Elohim? It says right here, for who can make straight that which... He, Elohim, hath made crooked to turn upside down. So that means the Lord loveth the righteous, but the way of the wicked, he turneth upside down. There it is. Okay, now, Genesis 1, where everything got turned upside down right here. And Elohim created man in his own image. So God, Elohim, gods of the supreme God, this is making a host body system that destroys angels. So Elohim created man in his own image. In the image of Elohim created he him. Male and female created he them. So this is the work of Elohim right here. Consider the work of Elohim. Who can make right that which Elohim right here. Look, Elohim right here is making a host body system. And that's what turns you upside down. And it says right here in Genesis 2. And on the seventh day, Elohim ended his work. Properly deputy ship ministry never serve all. So it's not arguable. And Genesis 2, and the Lord God formed man from the dust. He didn't, it doesn't say he created man. It says he formed him from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul right there. And so... That is the second man mentioned this. So in, in 1 Corinthians 15, it says the first man is of the earth, earthy, demonic. It says it. The first man is of the earth, demonically imbued. The second man, which is Genesis 2, is the Lord from heaven. So Genesis 2, when the Lord God forms man, that's the Lord from heaven putting his spirit into a host body system, which will interbreed with uh, the serpent race in Genesis 3. So then you have a commingled race. You have a race that's good and evil. That's why it says man has become as one of us to know good and evil. Now the, the mystery of the Bible is solved. I hope you understand that. Everything I just showed you is not arguable because it's the word of God. And if you go back and you look at other scriptures that never made sense if you read them at face value, Want to watch them make sense now? Ready? Watch this. Let's go to Ezekiel. Ezekiel 28. Try and make sense of this without reading the word God in its proper context. Here it is. Son of man, say unto the prince of Tyrus, Thus saith the Lord God, because thine heart is lifted up, and thou hast said, I am God, I sit in the seat of God, in the midst of the seas, yet thou art a man, not God, though thine set thine heart is the heart of God. Okay, I will say it again. Thus saith the Lord God, because thine heart is lifted up, and thou art said, I am God, I sit in the seat of God, in the midst of the seas, yet thou art man, and not God, though thy set thine heart as the heart of God. Now, let me ask you a question. If you don't know what the word God means everywhere it's used, there is no way you could understand what they're saying right there. It'd be like, <laughs> okay, ready? Let me say it the way it is. Son of man, say unto the prince of Tyrus, thus saith the Adonai Yehovah, because thine heart is lifted up, and thou hast said, I am El, the almighty God. I sit in the seat of Elohim, in the midst of the seas, yet thou art a man and not El, the Almighty God. Although you set your heart is the heart of Elohim. See, because he, what he's saying is, look, you're trying to say that you're El, the Almighty God, which is El, the Almighty God from heaven, the Father of lights that created Elohim. 
So El, the Almighty God, created everything, including El Elohim. I create the darkness, and I form the light. Isaiah 45 will believe. And here is a perfect example. Ready? Thus saith the Lord God, the self-existent eternal Jehovah, because thine heart is lifted up and thou hast said, I am El. See right here? It's thou hast said, I am El. Right here. El, the almighty God. So you said you're El, the almighty God. I sit in the seat of Elohim. See Elohim right here. It's not El. I sit in the seat of Elohim. So he's in the midst of, and he's like in the midst of them, in the midst of the seas. So in in the, in your heart, because took on a host body in the midst of the seas. Yet thou art a man and not El. See, and not El, the Almighty God. Though thou set thine heart is the heart of Elohim. See right there? So it all makes sense now because Lucifer said his heart is the heart of Elohim. And then look what it says right here. Wilt thou yet say before him that slayeth thee, I am, I am God, Elohim, but thou shalt be a man and no El, the Almighty God. So, now we can look at the other scriptures that may have been nebulous and may have not made a lot of sense. And they're clearly understood because the Lord revealed the absolute truth of the word to the person that's speaking to you. He showed this to me as my ministry. This is what I became a confirming witness to the word of God. And I'm not worthy to do it. I'm not, I feel embarrassed that he would use someone is just, it's just, I'll just put it this way. The Bible says, I will use the things the world considers foolishness to confound the wise. Boy, did he do that. <laughs> okay, just leave it at that. Okay, now here we go. Now, now that I've shown you those scriptures again, let's get back into the disclosure because I told you I was going to show you the absolute reality of where we're at. Now, y'all saw an Olympic uh, ceremony where you saw the pit opening, you saw worms coming up, you saw the golden traveler representing Lucifer, you saw the golden traveler raising up all the worms from the pit and then pulling up Nike, the goddess, the female rival, the goddess of victory onto the stage right in front of the whole world. Well, here is a representation of the twin female system coming up out of the pit from the Ozzy Osbourne. See, they're coming up in front of the stars. The twin females, Mut, the mother goddess of the Egyptian pantheon. Here they are. And they're going to come together to become one. And it becomes a bow. Then it becomes a serpent. So the two females together make the serpent. Okay, and they come up and become the serpent. The word in the Bible for I will arise above the stars of, of God, the word for arise is Allah. But if you look at the Arabic word Allah right here is the standard Arabic word for God. It is used by both Muslims and Arab Christians. And it means the God. So Al right here, A-L, Al, and then La means the God. Sorry about that. Switched on me. And then it says the word for God was Il or El or Eloah. And it is linguistically related to the Aramaic, Aramaic words Elah or Allah and the Hebrew word El, Elohim for God. See Elohim? I put it in bright pink right here to make it ridiculously obvious. Elohim, Allah, Elohim, the Elohim. Now, there's a new variant of the, you know, the, I, I don't like to use the word because I don't like the algorithms they put, but you know that thing that they stabbed in everybody? There's a new variant, and it's called KP3. K is 11, P is 16, so 1116 in the Bible is Bama. I will arise above the stars of El. The word arise is Allah, 
and then the the arise above the heights the I will ascend into heaven the word is Bama I will Allah above the stars of El I will ascend I will Allah above the heights Bama yeah I wonder what the odds are on all this and it just so happens that the word ascend means Allah the word ascend means Allah and here's a guy that we know is Muslim and we know that this guy right here is transgender and has a penis as well as breasts. Everybody knows it. It's no secret. He said he likes holding hands with his husband, Michael. Let me just show you to make sure everybody knows that because I'm not just saying something. This is what he said himself. I walk with my husband, Michael. walking and holding hands something that one of our fellow Americans for years could not do okay that's all you can if you can't tell that that who that is, and I'm sorry, you just, I guess you just can't tell what's going on. So, see, it's a it's a gender takeover in the end of the world. That's what's going on. So, now, let's get back to it. So, I will arise, uh, Allah, okay, and that's Islam. I will arise, because the God of the pit is the one that has to arise. I will arise above the stars in hell by being in a host body system with them, and they're attached to a worm in the pit. That's why Justin Timberlake has his own doppelganger being eaten by worms. That's how they're going to do it. Because you're in a twin system. Cain and Abel. Cannibal. So let me show you the cannibal system. Ready? There's Abel. There's Abel. And then there's Cain. The cannibal system. One is cannibalizing the other inside of you. That's in every single person that gets in. Now, let me show you a couple images of sheep with their tongues sticking out. There's a sheep with its tongue sticking out. There's the eye, there's the eye, there's the tongue. I'm just going to go through these very quickly. Here's the largest altar in the world, probably. It's a big dead sheep. There's the whole dead sheep. There's the eye, there's the eye, nostril, nostril, teeth, tongue. There's a big dead sheep. That's in the Vatican. That's in the mouth of the serpent. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. There's the whole thing with no drawing on it. The whole sheep is made up of angels because the angels are the sheep in the system. And the sheep that are coming into the system are coming into what? The serpent system. Because the whole building's a serpent. It's a no-brainer now. The Lord had me do all the work. He did all the work through me and gave it to you. So now, why would somebody draw a picture of me with a, a sleeping goat on the back of my head and a dead sheep? Because whoever did it is the serpent drawing a picture of me because they're hunting me. Here is the hieroglyph of Akhenaten and Nefertiti. There is a sheep with its tongue sticking out. There's the eye. There's the nose. There's the tongue. There's the teardrop. If you want to see what it is, rotate it 90 degrees the other way, and you'll see it's Nefertiti from the hieroglyph of Akhenaten and Nefertiti. Why is it a dead sheep? Uh, because that's their goal. Kill all the angels. The angels are sheep. Now, here's... A dead sheep, you can see there's the eye, there's nostril, there's the open mouth, there's the tongue, there's the bottom jaw, there's the ear. But that's also the head of the child that Akhenaten is holding. And I'll show it to you. And I'm going to make it very visible for you. So I'll go like that. And I'll enlarge it. So there's the dead sheep in the head of the child that Akhenaten's holding. I'll try and do this, see if it works. Here you go. So here's the sheep. I've got it. I managed to hold on to it. Ready? There you go. Ready? Watch. So why is... So here's the serpent being inside Akhenaten. There's the serpent being right there. There's his head and eyes. And he's holding a kid right now. And I, the Lord had me draw it in. See the dead sheep in the head of the child? Why is there a dead sheep in the head of the child? Because that's the angelic part that's trapped inside the serpent race now. That's why. Let's see. Here we go. 
There we go. So now the hieroglyph of Akhenaten and Nefertiti. There's Nefertiti. She's a dead sheep. You just got to turn it. Uh, you got to turn it upside down. You'll see the dead sheep. There's a serpent on her leg coming up, eating the kid in her lap right here. I'm not going to go through the whole thing because I've done it. There's videos where you can see it. There's a girl right here on her knee. There's her eye. There's the top of her head. There's her hair coming down. There's her buttocks going to her knee to her leg shooting out. There's her hip going to her knee, going to her foot. There's her knee bent shooting out. There's the head of the alien, or not alien, I should say serpent being. There's the head of the serpent being with his neck going in, but it turns into a scrotum and a penis impregnating the girl on her knees. And inside the head of the hybrid child is a serpent race mixed with a sheep race. There it is. The Lord let me draw it all in. I drew the whole thing in. The Lord drew it in through me and gave it to you. Here's an interesting thing the Bible says about those that stick out their tongue, that they're mocking God's children, because here's a sheep with its tongue sticking out. The Bible says those that wink the eye devise perverse things. They bring evil to pass. Uh, here's another sheep with its tongue sticking out. The Bible says, neither let them that are mine enemies wrongfully rejoice over me. Neither let them wink with the eye that hate me without a cause, because when you wink, it shows the angel of the bottomless pit is looking at you, and when you stick out your tongue, it shows that you want all the sheep dead. Here is another one that's from V Files. This is V Files, a modeling magazine, runway magazine. She's got her eye closed because, again, what's running her hates all the sheep, and then her tongue sticking out represents the dead sheep that's inside, that's being destroyed inside because the whole battle takes place inwardly. So now that's proven. Uh, let me show you. I drew in Akhenaten a little very clearly so you can see the serpent being inside of him. Now let me show you that on a police car. There you go. Now there's a police car from Austin, Texas. It's the same thing because they run everything. Here's Miley Cyrus doing the same exact thing. She's sticking out her tongue. She winks her eye all the time. She's mocking the sheep. And there's a picture someone drew of me right there. This guy named Alex. I said, I'll bet you a million dollars he draws a picture of me. And when he does, he puts a dead sheep on my face. I could see the sheep right away behind my ear. There's the eye of the sheep closed. Nostril. There's the open mouth. There's the tongue. Bottom jaw. There's the ear. There's the other ear. Let me slide it over. Why would someone draw a dead sheep on me? I don't know, but it's happened a lot of times. Let me guess. They're the serpent race. Yes, they're the serpent race. Now, what are jinn? Let's talk about jinn. What are jinn? Jinn are demonic spirits. It's where the word like genie comes from, the origin of gene. I'm sorry, the origin of jinn from evil spirits to genie. And you see the spiritual essence. You see this dark spiritual essence going in one eye and going in his nostrils and in his mouth, like a spiritual essence. Okay, he is... Uh, Islamic, uh, the crescent moon and the star. Here's the crescent moon and the star. It is the crescent moon birthing a star. And it says it represents the sun and the moon, or the moon and Venus. I'm sorry, the moon and Venus. And it is birthing. That represents the uterus birthing a star. And so it's the moon birthing Venus. And then it represents Islam. Uh, they say it's the unofficial symbol for Islam, but it's the moon birthing a star. Here's a book. Here's a book by this guy called a rising star, Allah. The word rising is Allah in the Bible, and it just so happens he has a background that intersects Islam, and it's been hidden from everybody, and there is some photographic evidence there's lots more, but they're trying to scrub a lot off the internet now. And it just so happens that they did a movie called, uh, I forgot what it was, but it was about basically Islam taking over America. And it was from their production company called Higher Ground, and it makes a pyramid, and it's higher ground from where? Well, I will ascend out of the bottomless pit, Allah. So there you go. So just put all the stuff together. It's real easy now because all the work's been done. Here's another image. 
There's another image. You can look at it yourself. No one's doctored that. These are all older images. They've been around for a long time before all the, before the AI stuff is kicked in. So now it's becoming very obvious. Here is the little deviance commercial. It says they come from underground. They have X's on their face representing female energy. They come from underground unleashing demon brothers. The sheeple are compliant and make for fine ingredients. Here come the little deviants. So here they come. They're coming from underground. It's a demonic source. They're coming up from underground. Go look at the little deviant scion commercial. You can watch the whole thing. Here's Madonna doing the same thing. She's coming up from the pit. So why is everybody arising from the pit with X's on them? Question. Why is and why are all these different people and groups rising up from the pit with an X on them? So here's Madonna. She has an X on her eye and an X on her chest. The reason is because it's true. That's why. Because the pit is rising. Okay, so now it's time to give you guys the testimony. I want, I want to, I'm going to give you the testimony about the Lord showing me that the end is at the door. And I'm going to show you the, the many confirmations that are identical that he gave to me one after another, after another, after another. And this is after he told me, go get the table that's got the Lord's Prayer. And I want you to bring it to San Antonio and put it in the room I told you to build. And so, so that, that's what I've been doing for the past month is working on this room. It's been very difficult, very hot. It's been some really tough stuff. Okay, now. I'm just trying to be really direct right now, guys. There's so much data. I just want to stay on task. Okay, y'all ready? Here we go. So I put this in the folder a uh, ways back right here is where the Lola thing is. During the Olympic stuff, he told me, I want you to put this image in, which is the Statue of Liberty being covered by a tidal wave. And then this whole wall represents flames. Babylon has fallen. She has utterly consumed. The waves have come up over Babylon. And then on the other wall, the Lord told me to put the, like it's a, it's a opening in a dimension, like an eye opening and the heartbeat of life leaving through the dimension that is in the shipping container that was in Grand Junction. Now, here's the part that is so, 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 so crazy. After the Lord told me to put that in there, I just went, why? It doesn't make sense with anything in the folder because I was doing all the Olympic stuff. And the Lord told me, trust me, put it in there. Well, then he told me, go get the shipping container from Houston. I want you to put it in the little room I told you to build. And I just thought, you know what? Just do what he says because in the past he's told me to do things. And I've said, well, I just... I don't want to get it wrong, so could you just confirm to me that this is actually what you want me to do? Which is okay to pray for a confirmation. and You can ask why. The Lord doesn't mind if you ask him why. He'll show you. <laughs> it may be a little much for you, but anyway, so the Lord told me to go get the table. And I said, okay, so I went and got the table, and I brought it back, and I'm currently finishing the room. I will be finished with the room, hopefully by Sunday. It should all be done. And the miracles that have rolled out with the room uh, were worth all the brutal, physical, uh, just stuff that went with building the room. Okay, let me show you all the things that happened in a row with the room to confirm that apparently some dimension is going to open up and... Hopefully, I pray to God that we will be able to leave. The Bible says, I will keep you from the hour of testing. And I pray that when he says, I will keep you from the hour of testing, that he means from any of the horror that's about to happen on this world right now. Because I am telling you right now that the serpent race is taking over the entire host body system. A demonic force is taking over the entire population of the world. It is all turning from one thing to another, and it, we are in the process of that happening. I pray that none of us have to witness the horror that's coming. The Bible says, pray that you're accounted worthy to escape all the horrors that are coming on this world. So I believe that the Lord will 
if you are ready, if you've been converted and you're waiting and you know he's coming and you put all your trust in him, then that's what I've done. I'm just praying for the mercy that will be shown in the moment that it, the switch is flipped because New York will be destroyed by nukes. It's coming. It's already printed on your $100 bill and the $10 bill shows a tidal wave covering a city and the Lord showed me it was New York. That's why it's in the shipping container. Okay, now let's keep going. Now let me show you. Here come the confirmations. Okay, now. The Bible says, The disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? And he answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. So the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, it is a gift that the Lord gives to you, and it is more valuable than all the money in the world. Okay, so now let me let me share with you the way the Lord rolled this out. So he had told me to go to put this in the show notes quite a ways back during the Olympic stuff. I already showed it to you. I did what he said. And then after I kind of got to one of my, my last Olympic video, this thing popped up on my on my YouTube feed. And it said the fifth element. And uh, I looked at it and I was like, that's weird. And there was a picture of a girl and it looked like a girl that I used to train horses with. And uh, I looked at it I was like, wow, that looks like so-and-so. looks like Terry. And I clicked on it and I started watching this trailer and I'm like, this is not the fifth element. So I'm going to play the trailer for you. It's about, I don't know, maybe four minutes. I'm going to play the whole trailer for you to give you a feel of the way the Lord rolled this out. Because then it went from one thing to the next, to the next, to the next, to the next. And I was just like, what's going on? Man, he's showing me the same thing over and over and over again. All right, so let's start. Okay, so this was already in the folder. And the Lord had told me to go get the table from uh, Houston that was in the shipping containers at Grand Junction at Night Under the Stars. And that's the image. Okay, here we go. Okay, just so you know, while this little trailer is playing, I'll probably stop it at certain points and just interject so you guys could know what was going on in my head and in my conversation uh, while this was happening. Okay, so I had put in the image of the portal opening with the heartbeat of life leaving. And I saw this trailer and I looked over and I'm like, wow, that looks like Terry. And I heard the Lord say, watch it. And so I turned it on. And here it is. Speaking future, where the universe sparkles with countless secrets and wonders, a dire threat emerges that could unravel the very fabric of existence. An ancient malevolence long believed to be vanquished stirs from its slumber, casting a shadow that threatens to engulf all of reality in eternal darkness. As the delicate balance of the cosmos teeters on the brink of annihilation, the fate of all life hinges on a single extraordinary individual. Meet Lilu, a mysterious and powerful being whose arrival heralds the universe's last hope for survival. With the galaxy on the edge of despair, Lilu is joined by Corbin Dallas, a former Special Forces operative with a sharp wit and unparalleled combat skills. His courage and resourcefulness become crucial as he teams up with Lilu to confront the gathering storm. Their journey brings them to Father Vito Cornelius, an eccentric and wise scholar who possesses ancient knowledge that could unlock the secrets needed to avert catastrophe. Their mission is nothing less than monumental, to retrieve the four element stones, ancient and potent artifacts scattered across the galaxy. When united with the elusive fifth element, these stones hold the key to defeating the encroaching darkness and restoring balance to the universe. But their path is fraught with peril as they face the nefarious Zorg, a malevolent industrialist with a personal stake in the chaos. And his now, I'm, I'm going to interject for a sec. 
Now, if you're me and you're sitting there watching this and you heard in your spirit the Lord tell you to watch it, and you're sitting there going like, uh, this is kind of weird. This isn't the fifth element that I know with Mila Jovovich. And I'm sitting here going, what is this? Like, what is this thing I'm watching? And I'm sitting there listening, but I'm listening to what it's saying. Did you listen to the beginning of it? How it's like, uh, here comes this malevolent old evil force that's about to, you know, basically threaten all of everything, which is what's going on right now. And so I'm sitting there going, uh, this is interesting, odd. Now watch army of mercenaries who will stop at nothing to seize the stones for their own sinister purposes as time runs out and the universe inches closer to destruction okay now listen to this as time runs out and the universe inches towards destruction and now i'm just sitting there going like are you are you trying to tell me something are you using this trailer to try and like communicate because it seems like you are now that's what was going through my spirit in my head i'm like lord are you trying to like use this thing to communicate something to me now watch time runs out and the universe inches closer to destruction lilu corbin and father cornelius face a series of thrilling challenges joined by a motley crew of diverse and intriguing characters including the enigmatic and mysterious diva plava laguna known for her captivating and otherworldly presence, as well as the flamboyant and eccentric Ruby Rod, whose vibrant personality and extravagant style make him a memorable ally. The Fifth Element promises a cinematic experience that combines breathtaking visuals, heart-pounding action, and a story of profound significance. As the countdown to the universe's ultimate showdown begins... Okay, now, okay, now right there, all of a sudden, spiritually i was like this is so weird lord what do you it's like you're trying to tell me like this are we like at the moment the countdown so while i'm watching this trying to kind of figure it out like what is this this isn't the fifth element i know like this is kind of freaky and but i'm listening to the words and i'm just trying to figure out is the lord trying to show me something and then this is where my ears perk up right here when i hear this in action and a story of profound significance. As the countdown to the universe's ultimate showdown begins, get ready to... Wow, right there, now all of a sudden, as a countdown to the universe's ultimate story, or, you know, a countdown to the ultimate conclusion, whatever it is, begins, and I go, wow, that's, that's weird. That looks just like the thing from the shipping container. So this is where it began. And I was just like, that is crazy. And so, so you see this right here? I'm like, wait a minute. That looks like the thing from the shipping container. So listen one more time. As the countdown to the universe's ultimate showdown begins, get ready to embark on a journey that will captivate your senses and challenge your perception of reality. The fifth element is coming soon to theaters near you, offering a cinematic journey that will ignite your imagination. And then I see this, the end... But this is where things get really weird. So I'm like, that is crazy. That looks just like the thing you told me to put in from the shipping container. And as I listen to the dialogue, I'm like, wow, it's like you're try trying to tell me that here comes the countdown. But I don't know for sure. I'm, I'm like, I'm still like, that's very interesting. But then I see the end right here and I'm like, oh, that's weird. But this is where it gets really weird. Watch. Okay, here's where things get really weird. Okay, it says the end. Okay, so you see it says the end. So I screenshotted that day. It says fifth element. See right here, fifth element. Watch this. Fifth element, 1950, Super Panavision 70. And it says the end. And then this pops up right here. African Sunshine Soul. 1971 Soul Music. Now, right there is where the Lord grabbed a hold of me out of the whole thing i was looking at that orange circle and i went that is weird then it said the end and then this popped on the screen it said the end and then this box came up and i heard the lord say pay attention 1971 jonathan and i was like that's weird what well, what would that have to do with anything trust me i was like okay strongs 
1971. This is the way he communicates with me. One of the ways. 1971 means something longed for to strain after, desire greatly, properly to long for what is fitting, like yearning for the Lord, learning, yearning to see the Lord again. Soul, my soul longeth for thee. And I was like, now that's crazy. I was like, okay, now you got my attention. So this is where it began. This is where it began. So it started with the circle in the container. I did it weeks before. And then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, you know, I'm ending the Olympics. And then all of a sudden this thing pops up. And I look at it because the thumbnail looked like this girl I used to train horses with named Terry. And I was like, wow, that looks like Terry. What is that? The fifth element it doesn't look like the fifth element. Then I watch it. And then all of a sudden, it's uh, this very interesting trailer. And then it's got this thing. And I'm like, well, wait a minute. That, that looks just like, let's see if I can, hang on one sec. So here's the, let me, uh, let me go back to the folder. So I, I'm going to try and drag this picture out. So look, look at this. I was like, wait a minute. Those things look basically identical. Now I'm asking you, does that look pretty much identical to you? I was like, that's really bizarre. And then I'm sitting there going, wow. And it's talking about the showdown to the ultimate's final conclusion. And I know I'm an end of the world harbinger. And it says the end. And then it says something soul thing. And I hear the Lord say, now look that up. And it means something you've been longing for. Well, what I've been longing for is the end. So I can see my Lord. So I can see Jesus again. That's what I've been longing for. The end. And so it says the end. And it says something long for. Something you wish for. Okay, now. You ready? Now we're just going to kind of rapid fire through it. I was like, okay, that's certifiably bananas. And I was like, that is just absolutely nuts. So here we go. Then I heard, I heard in my spirit uh, the two cellos into the world. And I was like, two cellos into the world. And so I was like, huh. I typed in two cellos into the world on YouTube. And let me show you what came up. Okay, so here's two cellos. Um, the show must go on. Now this is just so crazy. I don't. I mean, this to me was beyond my brain. And let me get this thing out real quick because I want to show you some. Okay, now watch this. So I want you guys to take a look at this picture. Now this is something that a subscriber had sent me a long time ago, and it's an image that looks like the sun's rays coming off, hitting the earth, starting a fire. But just take a look at the idea of the whole picture. Well, this was given to me as a gift years ago, and I hang on to this stuff. And I, and um, I had it, and I had it in a box, and I had it in my attic with some pictures of my children when they were young. And I have my house has gotten kind of full because a lot of the stuff from the Ark in Houston had to come here, and I was like, what do I do with all this stuff? So I put a lot of it in boxes, and I put it in my attic. Well, this was in a box in my attic, and we'll get to that in just a minute. But I heard the Lord tell me in my, in my spirit, it was like two cellos into the world. And I was like, that's weird. So I type in two cellos into the world and it brings up this video right here. Now I'm going to turn the volume off. I'm going to show you what happens. Now in this video right here, basically you'll see the same kind of thing right there as you'll see right here. It looks very much the same so if i go like this and you see this let me see and you see this right here just look at what's on your screen look at right here and look at right here and i'm like that is so strange okay but i hadn't seen i hadn't seen the painting yet because it was up in the attic and i hadn't gone in the attic yet and the odds of me going in the attic are just pretty much zero because it's San Antonio summer and to go up there, yeah, I had to have a really good reason. And I did, I had to get to some wiring. So I had to go up in the attic and there was a box on top of the, the little plate that I had to move, but there was a box and it was really causing me problems. And I was like, get, give me this box. I said, Corey, please take this box. So Corey set the box on the ground. 
I went in the attic. I dealt with the wire situation I had. But I had already watched the two cello thing, which I'm going to show you right now. And then I opened up the box because I heard the Lord say, open that box. And when I opened it, this was what was on the very top looking at me. I was like, now I have the shipping container. I have the fifth element. And and then I have uh, the two cellos. And the two cellos, what I'm going to show you, is almost not believable. You ready? Let's go to the two cellos. So this is the two cellos video. Let me show you what happened from that. Okay, so I'm just going to click on pictures. So in a row, you ready? So, okay, we'll go to that picture first. That's the first one from the container. I'm going to do them in a row right now. That's the second one from the fifth element, which is identical to the first one, pretty much. And then it says at the end of that, the end, and it said 1971, that said, look that up. And it means something, your soul, like it says soul, but it means what you have longed for, your soul has longed for, which is what? The return of Christ. And I'm just thinking, this is really crazy. And then... So I, I document what 1971 means. I long for strain after desire greatly that which you have longed for. For me, that's the return of Christ. And then I look, I save a couple images from the two cellos. I save that image. And then I save the image I basically just showed you. And I'll just stretch it out. And I save this image. And then I open, I open the box right here. You can see the box. That's the box it was in, see, and I opened up the box, and that was right on top. Now, now imagine you're me, and this is, it's all about timing, right? So I've already seen the other ones, and then for some bizarre reason, I'm pulling a box out of the attic, and I open the lid, because I hear the Lord say, look, why didn't I just put it back in the attic? I just hear, look in the box, and I open up my, I'm like, wow, that's the same as the two cellos. And that's the same as the fifth element. And that's the same as the wall in the container. And then I'm like, wow, this is really weird, Lord. Are you, are you trying to, like, tell me something? It feels like you're showing me the same thing over and over. So that's four of the same. And I'm just going, like, that's very odd. But I had watched the whole two cellos thing. And then I heard the Lord tell me to pay attention. Well, when I hear the Lord tell me to pay attention, I know something's going on. And I look at it, and it says, like, no admittance, and it's pointing down. And then it has this 2x, see, 2x, 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 no admittance, now closed, now sealed. And I'm like, this is very, very strange. Mandatory evacuation. And then I see, and the Lord, tell, like, directs my attention to these numbers and I'm like this is very strange and I hear the Lord tell me to look up 340 which is on that sign and it says mandatory evacuation and I know that the earth needs a mandatory evacuation if you're if you're a believer living here the serpent race is taking over and I know that there needs to be an evacuation for those of us that are believers and it says population total number 340 340 see it right there and I hear the Lord tell me, look that up in the Bible. And I thought, well, that's kind of weird. These are the only one things he told me to look up. I make fresh again, renew, restore. And it's Anna Kianazo to renew. Anna up and to make new again. Properly to restore by renewing. So to make new again, to revive and make new again. And then I hear look up. 40 and I'm looking right at 40 and it says 40 and I and I I thought I knew what 40 meant because 40 is the number of regeneration and rebirth I got saved at 40 and I saw 40 and I went 40 and I heard the Lord say look it up and I just went well isn't it regeneration and rebirth look it up and then it says set apart by God Set apart by or for God, holy and sacred, and it's hagios. And it means properly different, unlike others, holy for the believer. 
It means likeness or nature of the Lord because different from the world. So that's what the number 40 means. Okay, now at this point, the Lord's got my full attention. Because I've watched the world being destroyed. Just go watch the two cellos. Just go watch that video. And imagine you just watched that and then you opened up a box that had this in it. You would be going, and that's what I was doing. And so I was like, oh my gosh, you are trying to communicate with me. I get it. There's no way I could have all those things in a row. No way. They were all in a row. And I was like, okay, I know you're trying to show me something. So then let me show you where it went from there. Okay, so the very next thing that happened was I needed a light to plug into the room that we just built. It does not have a light in the ceiling. It only has a plug that you can plug in. Uh, it has, you know, several different plugs. And I went to, I went to uh, Walmart to just try, try and find a three-prong light I could just plug in. And it had a light. And uh, all I found was like this little, it's like you just plug it in like a USB. And it'll put like, uh, it looked like a marble light thing on the ceiling. And I thought, you know what, I'll just grab that. And I grabbed it. And I plugged it in, and here's what it turned into. And I was like, what? So this is inside the building, and this is what the light turned into. And I was like, okay, that's weird. That's not what I was expecting at all. And so this is what showed up from the light I plugged in. And I'm like, wow, that's weird. That's like all the other stuff that I'm seeing I did not expect that at all because now that matches everything else I was looking at it and I was like, that's just so bizarre. And then I was like, you know what? I got to go get some gas in the morning. And I went to go get gas and they had just changed all the signs at the gas pump. And it said infinite swirl. And I was like, this is so bizarre. Look at this. I was like, that is so weird. Infinite swirl. And I was like, that is just so random. <laughs> it's just like, first of all, why am I even looking at it? I was like, I, I don't sit there and look at, I don't sit there and look at uh, the signs on top of gas pumps. But it was one of those weird things to where I had half a tank of gas and I thought, you know what, I'm going to fill up because I knew I had some other things to do and maybe I had to make a drive. So I just ran over there as a specific trip. I don't make specific trips really to the gas station, but it was basically a specific trip and I was like that is so it's almost like the Lord sent me to the gas station to make sure I went it was very odd so I was like okay that's weird so I photographed that as well and I put it in the folder and then I'm like wait a minute I'm noticing how every single thing is the same exact thing and it's very bizarre and so then I got my parachutist magazine and it comes in a cover it comes in a white envelope and Corey handed it to me and it was in the white envelope. And I said, have you noticed that Parachutist Magazine has been matching what's going on in society on the covers of the magazine? It's so weird. And as soon as I opened up the magazine and pulled it out, I went, it has a guy doing a hook turn. See that guy? He's doing a hook turn like he's coming out of this dimension but it's the world and it says world skydiving day and i was like that is just so bizarre because see i know because of the olympics that they're talking they're they're publicly displaying the pit being open the worms coming up the lucifer taking the stage nike coming up dimension is open and that's everything i keep seeing and everything i'm doing whether or not I'm going to get gas, whether or not I'm getting a light, well, you know, whether or not I'm opening up a, a box from the attic, everything is like a dimensional swirl. And I'm like, that is really weird. And so anyway, when I saw that, I was like, that is very bizarre as well. And so then I was doing the video for you guys and I said, Lord, I need to, uh, I need to put a thumbnail on uh, the video the other night, and I heard the Lord say, the point of no return. And I went, the point of no return. And I went, oh, that's an album cover. And I sat there and I went, what band is that? What band is it? So I typed it into Google and it's the band Kansas. So let me show you something. 
I went into Google Images and I typed in the point of no return. Watch this. See, I thought it was Super Tramp, but it's Kansas. Let's see, Kansas. Here we go. So I typed it in. Here it is. Look. So I want you all to look at all this. It's all the same, exact same image. See it? Same image, same image, same image, same image. And I'm looking at it, but this one popped up conspicuously in front of all the other images. And I looked at it and I'm like, that is so weird. Because again, here is this spiral in the sky. And look what it says. Cat noticed this. Point of no. K-N-O-W. No return. And I'm like, that is crazy because this one is nothing like all the other ones. Look at it. I was just like, that is bizarre. So anyway, I saved that one and I put it in the folder as well. But I was, I was looking for a thumbnail. So then I saved this one because everything's the same this is the same this this is the same they're all the same hang on one sec but here's where things got really weird okay so i have all these common denominators all the same some spiral like in the sky did it, whatever venue the same the same idea a portal opening, a portal opening, a swirl in the sky, whatever. It's it's the same thing over and over and over again consistently. And I thought that is so bizarre. But then I heard the Lord tell me to pay attention. He had told me to go get the table that's got the Lord's prayer on it from the shipping container that was in Grand Junction at the corner of Rainbow Avenue and Casimir. And the two shipping containers were there. We had to get together. Grand Junction means like the great coming together. Well, the picture that was in the folder that I showed you right here, the Lord told me to pay attention. I looked at it and I'm like, what is that? You see like the rainbow? See, it looks like a rainbow and it's like, huh, it looks like it's being pulled in to this vortex. I was like, oh my gosh. That's the Lord's prayer from the table. <laughs> I was just like, what the heck? So yeah, so the Lord's prayer from the table manifested as a reflection like it's being pulled in to that vortex. And now here's the part that I have to give a testimony to. I heard in my spirit, all those that have been reconciled to their father that are on the rock that have the key of David and have been restored are waiting for that. And I was like, well, that would make total sense, wouldn't it? If there is some moment in time where your spirit leaves the dimension you're in, I guess there would have to be an opening to leave through. I don't know, but I'm just giving a witness to it. This is what happened. And I was like, wow, now if you go watch the two cellos and you watch the whole video and you just spend some time watching this one, you know, one second. At the very end of the two cellos, uh, while the whole earth is falling apart, let me show you something very interesting that happened. Now, remember the fifth element, what happened? It showed the end and it said 1971. Now watch this. I was like, oh, wow. And then I noticed there's no time on the clock. See it? Okay, now, am I saying that I know for sure that's going to happen? Uh, no, but I can tell you, I didn't know for sure what Chinati was, but I know the Lord told me to go to Chinati. And he proved it by giving me two hours of the same rock. Now I'm going to give you the testimony about the two hours of the same rock and what it has to do with the Romulus movie and the world because the enemy, the serpent race is here now 
They are starting to manifest. I've seen it. I've experienced it. It's going to come in a way that most people won't be able to. It'll be like a horror movie gone live. You'll be like, what are you doing? Who are you? Like all of a sudden humanity will be something that you had no idea because all the double downers and all of those that have been sequestered or taken over, it's going to get ugly in a moment and it's going to be beyond the human brain. Also, the pit's going to open and out of the pit, there's going to arise smoke and out of the smoke, there's going to be locusts on the earth. Now, a lot of that intersects the Lord sending me to a movie called Romulus. I went and watched it twice just to make sure that I knew what I was seeing because I almost didn't have the mental capacity to deal with it. I was like, this is a little too much mentally. But I know it's true because the Lord confirmed it. So this is an hour long video right now. I'm going to run this video right now so you guys know what the confirmation was. Bring the table to San Antonio that's got the Lord's Prayer in it. Put it in this room I had you build. It's going to be a representation of those that have been converted, that have been restored as our Father has restored us. You've been restored back to your Father in Heaven. The night I got saved, I prayed our Father. I was restored to my Father in Heaven in the presence of Michael. I love you in Christ. If you don't believe me, then don't believe all the supernatural data I showed you because with that, every single word of it that I've shown you is true. The Bible that the Lord's let me show you is not arguable. The Vatican is a snake. There is a serpent race. I can show it to you in Akhenaten and Nefertiti. I can show it to you in downtown Grand Junction. I can show it to you in a card my wife gave me. I can show it to you in pictures people drew of me. I can show it to you all over the place all the time now. It's not, it's not hidden anymore. The veil has come down. That's called the apocalypse. That's the unveiling. And the Lord used me to unveil the enemy. The enemy has been unveiled. And now she is visible, and the enemy is she. Now, that's why, I, and I want to show you that you understand, they said the future is female because the future that's female is a her thing. That's why at the Olympics, uh, uh, the girl that played the national anthem, the Star Spangled Banner, was her, H-E-R. That's why this girl that's uh, future is female, she's blue because blue represents their color, basically death. And here, uh, here at the Olympics, during the ceremony, they had a representation of the rider on the pale horse as death, and she delivered the flag, and when she delivered the flag, they hung it upside down. Elohim turns everything upside down, and they showed that they've turned the whole place upside down, and they're claiming that they've won. That's what they're doing. It's very easy to see. I mean, it is very easy to see. And here's a here's a picture from my show notes that just shows you the obviousness of the twin female thing. There's the twin female thing from Ozzy Osbourne. There's the COVID coin from the Vatican. There's a woman on each side of a man. Here's Ian Bud Light. There's twin female on each side of him. Here's the twin females from the Women's March in Austin, where they're both dressed as vaginas. There's the twin female at the Vatican. There's the Dos Equis guy in between two females. And uh, the Dos Equis is no different than the Vatican coin. It's no different. It's the same thing. That's what it's all about. No doubt about it. So the mystery is solved. They, they will encompass a man. Let's see. And here's also... Uh, kind of an interesting way to you know see how obvious there is a rudimentary image of uh, female genitalia right there there's a rudimentary image of it there is also a rudimentary image of it on her elbow so that's a vagina but when she opens it up it's a bug with its wings spread and the reason she did that is because that was the mechanism to get the locust out of the pit so when she opens up her arm, then it spreads her wings. When it opens, when it opens, the bugs come out. No different than this image right here 
and this gif right here that the female was used to capture all the angels and birth another race of beings. There it is. That's what that image, that's what this gift stands for. She has captured all the male energy, she, and out comes her babies, the locusts from the pit. That's it. Okay, and that's what the whole thing's been about. Now, let's see. There's quite a few other things in here. Let me just scroll down. Now, I think uh, we sh for for the sake of this video, I should what I should do is I should wait and show you guys the system with the twin female system now on the next video and show that with you in relationship to the Romulus movie because now I can just go straight through it. The Romulus movie is nothing more than the outward manifestation of the serpent race showing. All the angels, what they did to us. I can show it to you. I can prove it even by, you know what the name of the xenomorph is for all the alien movies? Guess what the name of the xenomorph is for all the alien movies? You know, from the first alien, you know what they call it? XX121. XX121. You know, XX twin female, like, there it is. I've shown you the twin female thing is the hindecogram. The twin, the twin female thing is the insect. So there's a female looking opposite directions and the spiritual essence is the insect in the middle. So that is the twin female essence insect as spiritual being. Now, let me show you the XX21 because it's mind boggling. So in the Romulus movie, in the Romulus movie, Let's see, hang on one sec. The xenomorph is XX21. There it is. Xenomorph XX121. XX121. That is the name of the xenomorph from all the alien movies. And then... Let me show you a clip from Alien with Sigourney Weaver. She said, this is Ripley, the last survivor of the Nostromo. You know what the word Nostromo means? Nostromo means our man. Because their man is just like Justin Timberlake, the one that breeds a worm within us. It means... Our man, right here. See right here, meaning our man. Nostromo, that's the name of the ship. And that, if you watch the new Alien movie, they find a rock in space, and they have to cut the rock in half, you know, like the one I had in the riverbed in Chinati, obviously much bigger. But when they split the rock in half and open it, guess what's in it? The Xenomorph FXX121. XX, female, 121, Adam, the first man. Yeah, let me show you a couple pictures when you type it into Google. <laughs> yeah, here you go. Ready? Read it for yourself. Xeno King Xenomorph, XX, 121, species woman. There you go. No big deal. They're just kind of making fun of all the angels because the dimension that these things are from they know they get you the second you die. They get you. There it is. Look how they have like a stinger like a scorpion. See it? Look at what you're looking at. XX121, species woman. 121 in the Bible is Adam. Female that made man. Everything Jonathan Kleck's been telling you. Now, there's a lot more, and I want to show you a lot more, but let's wrap this video up. So you guys can sit there and try and wrap your brain around it. Because here's the other thing the Lord showed me. There's a there's a movie called Ready or Not. It's kind of a dark comedy. It's actually a pretty, you know, I'm not big on horror movies, but it was probably one of the best uh, dark comedies I've ever seen. And it is a horror movie. And this, uh, 
this other uh, thumbnail I have in here is ready or not, CERN just opened hell. So the Lord has been showing me consistently the same message. Get ready. Be ready. If you haven't been converted, you're probably in big trouble. You're probably going to be in the Great Tribulation. You will probably see things that you're not ready to see. But if you turn to the Lord your God with all your heart and you accept Christ as your payment and you invert the world, you'll see the truth and you'll know the truth and the truth will set you free. Okay. Now, let me see if I need to show you any other little trailers. I have a little, I got a, I have an alarm set. I have an appointment I have to keep. So I'm going to let this video fly right now. I love you in Christ. There's more. I'll pick it up on the next video. I'm just going to shove all this stuff out at you. You guys look at it. Make sure you get the folder. Make sure you go through this folder. The end is at the door, guys. I'm absolutely convinced where, where it could be any moment. Anyway, love you in Christ.